This video is meant to help you better understand your new diagnosis of rectal cancer and what you can expect as part of the surgical treatment of it. What is rectal cancer? The rectum is part of your digestive system and is at the end of your large intestine or large bowel. It connects your large intestine to your anus and measures about 12 to 15 centimeters or 6 inches in length. The major function of the rectum is to act as a storage facility for stool until you are ready to pass a bowel movement. As the rectum stores stool, it plays an important role in controlling the timing and frequency of passing bowel movements, as well as maintaining control. Most people will, at some point, have rectal polyps, growths of normal rectal tissue that are not cancerous. In some people, these polyps may transform into rectal cancer over the course of many years. About 15% of colorectal cancers are due to inherited genetic conditions, while the remainder are largely due to environmental exposure and other factors outside of your control. Rectal cancer can also spread beyond the rectum to other organs like the liver or lungs. Cancer cells can travel to different areas of the body through the bloodstream, but one of the first places that rectal cancer spreads is the lymph nodes around the tumor. If these lymph nodes contain cancer cells, it may indicate a higher risk of future cancer spread. This may also change the way in which your tumor is treated. For many patients, the best way to treat rectal cancer is with a combination of therapies. You may have already received chemotherapy and or radiation prior to being assessed for surgery. Or you may be assessed for surgery directly after your diagnosis. Your healthcare team will let you know which sequence and combination of these therapies is right for your tumor. Before you meet with the surgical team, you would have undergone several tests to determine if surgery is the next step in your treatment pathway. Routine blood tests will be performed to ensure that you're healthy enough to undergo surgery. This includes checking your iron levels and tumor markers specific to colorectal cancer. You have undergone a colonoscopy. A shorter version, called a flexible sigmoidoscopy, will be repeated in clinic to confirm the location of the tumor and to possibly biopsy the tumor. This is not performed with any sedation and takes less than five minutes. To prepare for this, your surgical team will provide you with instructions to have one to two fleet enemas. You have undergone a CT scan of your chest and abdomen to assess whether or not there has been any spread from your rectum to other organs like your liver or lungs. You have undergone an MRI of your pelvis to measure the size of the tumor and its location in the rectum. Based on the location, your surgical team can determine if your gastrointestinal tract can be safely reconnected. The MRI also shows whether or not there has been any spread from your rectum to the nearby lymph nodes or structures around the rectum. If you have undergone chemotherapy or radiation before surgery, you will undergo additional MRI scans to examine how your cancer responded to these treatments. There are also some things that you can do before your operation to improve your recovery. One of the best things you can do to improve your health and speed up your recovery after surgery is to stop smoking. The more smoke-free time before your operation, the better your recovery will be. Talk to your family physician or surgical team if you would like to discuss smoking cessation aids. Properly managing and treating any health conditions you might have will greatly improve your recovery. Your surgical team will often request the assistance of a medical team to ensure that your medical conditions are well addressed prior to your operation. Undergoing surgery is a bit like running a marathon, so training your body for the stress of the operation is important. Everyone's recovery can be improved through exercise in the weeks leading up to the operation. Doing exercises to strengthen the muscles in your pelvic floor can also improve your surgery outcomes. 
you can refer to online Kegel exercises or you may be referred to a pelvic floor physiotherapist. Some patients may be referred to a prehabilitation program in which they will see a psychologist, physiotherapist, and registered dietitian to help them prepare for the operation. If your tumor is located in the rectum and your surgical team has determined that your gastrointestinal tract can be safely reconnected, you will likely be recommended to undergo a low anterior resection, also known as a restorative proctectomy. In this procedure, a portion or the entirety of the rectum is removed. Depending on the location of your tumor, different amounts of rectum can be preserved. The higher your tumor, the greater the length of rectum can be preserved. Before a low anterior resection, you will be required to cleanse your bowel with a bowel preparation similar to the one you received before your colonoscopy, or a fleet enema. In a low anterior resection, you will lie on your back on the operating table, and your anesthesiologist will provide general anesthesia. Once you are asleep, a breathing tube will be placed in your throat, and a drainage tube will be placed into your bladder to monitor how much urine you are producing during the operation. This may be removed before you wake up, but may also be left in for one or two days. A small percentage of patients have difficulty urinating after it is removed and require the tube in the bladder for a longer period of time. In almost all cases, this operation is performed through minimally invasive surgery, also called laparoscopic or keyhole surgery. Using this technique decreases your risk of infection and your level of pain after the operation. If you receive laparoscopic surgery, you will likely have one incision around your navel or belly button, one above it, two small incisions on the right side of your abdomen, and one incision on the left side. A larger incision is usually placed above your pubic bone. These incisions may vary based on the exact location of your tumor. You may be considered for robotic-assisted surgery, where robotic arms are attached to your abdomen through small incisions. The robotic instruments are controlled by the surgeon at a computer console. The surgery length and outcomes are similar to laparoscopic surgery, and you will have a similar number of skin incisions, although the location will vary. During the operation, this surgery can be switched to laparoscopic surgery. Your surgeon will tell you which technique is best for you. For some patients, it is safer to perform this operation through a traditional, open incision. If this is the case, you may have an increased risk of infection and require a longer stay in hospital after your operation. Your surgical team will discuss which method is most appropriate for you. If you are undergoing a laparoscopic or robotic-assisted low anterior resection, your surgical team will inflate your abdomen with carbon dioxide gas to create space to conduct the operation. They will then insert a camera called a laparoscope into your abdomen that will allow the surgical team to see throughout the procedure. The surgeon will then remove the segment of rectum with the tumor and the surrounding lymph nodes, disconnecting it from your colon. These lymph nodes will be tested for the presence of cancer cells. If cancer cells are found, you may require chemotherapy if you did not receive it before surgery. Once the tumor is removed, the end of the healthy colon is connected to the remaining rectum or anus so that your gastrointestinal tract is once again a continuous tube. In some cases, if your tumor is located low in the rectum, you may be required to have a stoma. A stoma is a small opening in the abdomen where a part of the intestine is brought to the skin. This opening allows for stool to empty into a collection bag. A stoma is used to help keep stool away from your new connection to allow it to heal. The intention is that this stoma is temporary in nature, with a plan to reverse it in the future. The NSWOC team, nurse specialized in wound, ostomy, and continence, will teach you how stomas work 
and mark the best possible location prior to the operation. Like any operation, there are risks when having this surgery. There is a small chance of infection at the surgical incision and a small chance of bleeding during the operation. There is also a small chance of a leak from the connection between the colon and rectum or anus. If a leak in the new connection occurs, you may need antibiotics. You may also need an additional procedure or operation, depending on how severe the leak is. If a stoma was not part of your original surgery, you may require a stoma at this point. Rectal surgery is challenging because of its location in the pelvis, surrounded by many key structures controlling urination and sexual function. There is a small chance of injuring these structures, such as the ureters, which are the tubes that connect your kidneys to the bladder. There is also a small chance of sexual and urinary difficulties after the surgery. The nerves that control erection, ejaculation, and vaginal lubrication are in this area. This will be further discussed with you by your surgical team. After a low anterior resection, most patients have altered bowel function. This is a group of symptoms known as low anterior resection syndrome. You may experience changes in the frequency and urgency of your bowel movements, loose stools, incomplete movements, or stool leakage. These changes may be temporary or long-lasting and are important for you to know about. Your surgical team will work closely with you to help you manage your symptoms and help maintain your quality of life. Most patients who have had a low anterior resection will recover for two to four days in hospital. While you are in hospital, any pain that you have will be managed using medication that is injected or taken as pills depending on your level of nausea. You may be provided with a pain pump that will help you manage your pain. Your diet after the operation is completely dependent on your appetite. You can start to eat full meals starting on the day after surgery if you want to, though your surgical team may recommend that you start with fluids only and slowly work up to solid food. Either way, there is no risk of damage to the colon. If you do not have a stoma, there are no dietary or food texture restrictions after a low anterior resection. If you have a stoma, you will meet with a dietitian to learn about diet recommendations with a stoma. Sometimes you may have excessively high amounts of stool from your stoma, leading to dehydration. It's important to measure your stoma output for the first few weeks after the surgery. Talk to your surgical team if the output is high, as there are medications that can help control it. You will also receive stoma care with the NSWOC nurse while you are in the hospital. This includes learning how to empty and change the collection bag. One of the most important things you can do to help speed your recovery is to start moving around on the day after your operation. This includes getting out of bed, walking to the washroom to use the toilet, and walking around the hospital unit or hospital halls. You are safe to be discharged from hospital when you can tolerate eating and drinking, your pain is managed on oral medications, and you're able to move around and support yourself safely. After you're discharged from the hospital, you will continue to recover for a few weeks at home. During this time, you may require help with housekeeping, meal preparation, grocery shopping, and childcare. You may also need time off from your work. You should not require narcotic pain medication beyond the first few days after the operation. Usually, over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or Advil are encouraged for any lingering discomfort. If you have pain that is not controlled with these medications, it may be a sign that you're suffering from a complication. You should contact your physician's office or return to the hospital. 
Once your pain is manageable with over-the-counter medications and you feel comfortable doing so, you may safely return to working and driving. Most patients return to normal activities within three to four weeks. You can start doing regular cardiovascular exercise one week after your operation, but you should avoid lifting anything heavier than 10 to 15 pounds, or 5 to 7 kilograms, for four weeks. After that, you can slowly work towards heavier lifting. Just remember to start low and go slow. If a stoma was created as part of your surgery, community nursing care will be arranged for you to help care for your stoma until you become comfortable managing it independently. Three to four weeks after your surgery, you will return to the clinic so that the surgical team can assess your recovery and discuss the results of the tests on your tumor. Certain results may mean that you require additional treatment after surgery, like chemotherapy. You will be encouraged to follow up with your chemotherapy specialist after the surgery. We understand that this is a very difficult and frightening time for you, but it is important to know that your surgical team is always ready to help you and that they want to ensure that you can continue living a healthy and happy life for as long as possible. Don't hesitate to reach out to your surgical team, family doctor, or other medical specialists if you have any questions or concerns about your treatment plan.